Whether you're studying for the NCIDQ exam or you're simply looking to freshen up your knowledge on ADA codes, you've come to the right place. In my last ADA codes video, we looked at the floor plan of a standard ADA restroom and some basic codes that you need to know. In this video, we're gonna take things one step further and look at this restroom in an elevation view. What's up designers, my name is Kelsey. I'm an NCIDQ certified interior designer and the owner of KLSY, a Manhattan-based design studio specializing in commercial spaces. My mission here on YouTube is to help other designers excel in their career while promoting transparency about the career and industry. I'm cooking up something really special that hopefully will launch in 2025. So if you're on the road to taking the NCIDQ exam, or you're looking into it in the near future, then be sure to click the link down in the description box to sign up for my email list, where you will be the first to receive updates on when it launches and to receive additional KLSY updates and insights. With all of that said, let's now go take a look at ADA restroom elevations. Here's an elevation of an accessible water closet. As we know from the last video, a water closet is the technical term for a toilet. Water closets must be positioned 16 to 18 inches away from the sidewall, measured to the center line of the water closet. The seat itself must be mounted between 17 and 19 inches from the floor. So that's to the top of the toilet seat. A quick note that the ADA code recommends a wall hung water closet. So if you encounter a question on the NCIDQ exam that asks you to select the best fixture for an ADA restroom, then you would wanna select a wall hung fixture. The flush control must also be placed on the open side if it's hand operated. So the side that's furthest from the sidewall. This is so it's easy for someone in a wheelchair to reach the flushometer. Accessible water closets must have two grab bars, one behind the toilet, and one on the sidewall. Both must be mounted between 33 and 36 inches from the floor, measured to the top of the grab bar or to the top of the gripping surface. The grab bar located at the back wall behind the toilet must be 36 inches minimum in length. It must also be placed as shown on this elevation with the wall end of the grab bar a minimum of 12 inches away from the center of the toilet. The grab bar located on the side wall must be 42 inches minimum in length and placed a maximum of 12 inches away from the back wall. Instead of having two separate grab bars, you may also have one continuous grab bar as long as it satisfies all of these same conditions. Note that vertical grab bars are not required by ADA code. However, the ICC A117.1 standard for accessible and usable buildings and facilities, which is referenced in the IBC, requires an 18 inch minimum vertical grab bar at water closets. So there is a possibility that this appears on your exam. There are additional requirements for bathroom accessories like toilet paper dispensers, but I wanna save that for a future video so we can go in more depth about that. Let's now take a look at the elevation for a standard ADA compliant lavatory or sink. Lavatories must be mounted no more than 34 inches above the finished floor, measured to the top of the lavatory fixture or to the top of the counter. They must also have a minimum knee clearance underneath the lavatory of 29 inches high and eight inches deep. Because of all these conditions, wall hung lavatories are always preferred in ADA restrooms. So the same pertains if you happen to see a question on the NCIDQ exam that asks for what type of lavatory fixture would be best for ADA compliance, then be sure to choose the wall hung option. If the pipes are exposed below the lavatory, they must be insulated to avoid any type of injury to a person in a wheelchair. If they accidentally bump their legs into it, there's a chance that they could burn their legs or they can hit any sharp abrasive surfaces. So it's important to have those pipes covered. I will also cover mirror requirements in a future video because I consider that to be a bathroom accessory. So that is it for me for now. If you're looking for more NCIDQ test prep videos, then check out my NCIDQ video playlist here. And if you're thinking of taking the NCIDQ exam, then don't forget to click the link down below to be added to my email list and be notified when I launch more NCIDQ related content. I'll see you next time for more educational interior design content. Thanks for watching and happy studying.